Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Facebook family. I just want to thank God for each and every one of you on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Look, look, I, I know I've been gone. I've been missing in action, but I'm still on the grid. Look, I just want to thank God for you and for you and your prayers. And um, I pray that you had a wonderful 4th of July and a wonderful holiday with your family and your friends. Also, guess what? I've been babysitting. So I've been kind of in restraints right now. So, and I, and I have to spend that time with my granddaughter because um, we can't, we can't preach to the world and lose our family, okay? And uh, we had a revival all last week. We went to a church that um, they were having a revival all last week. So I was really occupied last week and then had a, 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 a a great man of God who was almost like a dad to me because I wasn't a part of his ministry, but he took me up under his wings as if I was. And his name was Bishop Samuel L. Green. He passed away, and um, but he was a great man of God. He covered a lot of space, you know, and he um, took an interest in me, you know, and he cared about what happened to me. And that that right there, did, I had to go to his funeral. So in the, in the way they put him away with, with such dignity, you know, such respect, such honor, I thank God for that man of God. And I pray that he carried the same weight in eternity. Um, it was so many people's lives that he had affected. Um, also, um, you know, my granddaughter had asked me a question, Facebook family. I'm not going to get into the book today, um, but she had asked me a question. She said, Grandma, um, why don't people really talk about salvation the way that you talk about salvation? I said, well, um, I don't know. Sometimes it's the way that they've been trained. Sometimes it's the, the, what they come up under, you know. But I do realize that salvation is all about leaving one life, you know, the life that we were born into um, the life that we were taught to live outside of God, you know, and the or everything that branched off from that life, we are called to lay that life down in order for us to take up another life that has already been predestined for us to live out, you know. So salvation is all about being rescued from one life into another life, the bloodline of the fathers. Um, um, I told my granddaughter, I said, look, the Bible said that the sins of the father, not the mother, but the sins of the fathers are, again, are, are upon the children. So we have to be re- united with our eternal father through the washing of the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach who has given us the ability to be adopted into an eternal kin kingdom. Him being that bloodline, you know, washing the blood, um, washing our bloodline from that Adam, that Adamic nature, that Adam nature. Yeah, I did say this to her, you know, but I had to draw it for her. You know, I had to show her that she get knowledge from the outside and all of this knowledge that she gets from the outside, which, um, um, that um, we are developed by, we are um, um, commun in communion. We, we develop the outside. We have physical knowledge that develop the outside, and it is entered into the brain mass. And brain mass is simply the nervous system, the neuron system. And so it's how we feel, how we see, how we hear, how we taste, how we smell. You know, everything is based on the sensory, you know. But then you have to, re then that knowledge that is downloaded like software into the brain mass is reflected into the soul. This is what I told her, you know, because we, um, when we when we when we move into the soul aspect of it, then we are dealing with the intellect, and those are the foul cabinets of life. You know, all of the information that's gained from the outside is placed into the intellect, and then the emotions. You take the E, you move it away, and you have motion. Everything that is moving, um, based on our, our emotions, is, is predicated. Um, the, on the narrow system, the brain system. I had to tell her this, but I drew it for her, okay? And I said, you see this over here? This is the spirit. This is the mind of God. The Bible said, be ye renewed by the spirit coming from your mind. So the spirit is in the mind of God, okay? And so it's in that place that there is a metamorphosis that needs to take place. It is separated from the soul and from the, the, the brain mass. And everything that is reflected into the soul is then reflected into the unconscious conscious state of man, which is the spirit that has not been redeemed, that has not been reconciled, that has not been restored, and that part is creating without our permission. And so we have to be redeemed back to God based on that spiritual attribute that has no connection to the outside world. It is connected to eternity. And so I want her to know that it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, I want her to know that it doesn't matter that that um, you go to church because church don't save you. Church is there to give you information that you need in order to get saved, you know. But it is God that saves you. He comes in and he, he delivers us from a life of sin. Sin, sin in the physical nature, being, you know, driven by our senses, by our lust, by our desires. We are driven by these things because we have no spiritual attributes to connect us to our eternal father. And like I told my Asia, I said, when you um, come into the world today, now the world is 
changing. There is a new regime. You know, there are no, there, the rules are being changed. The, the regulations are being changed. So the rights and wrongs are being confused, you know. So what is right is now wrong, and what is wrong is now right. So, right. so the boundaries are being removed. And so her generation is going to have a hard time determining what is right and what is wrong because they are being removed, okay? So if you have no right and wrong, then you are moving towards the era of bestiality. Yeah, the day of the beast. Yeah, <laughs> he's coming, okay? So we have to get into our places. That's what I was trying to tell my Asia. So it's not about age. I should, well, I want to have some fun. I want to be able to have fun too. You can have fun collecting the harvest. You can have fun finding out who you are. Not, such, not necessarily something that's religious. You, you could be called to the political realm. You could be called to the medical realm. You could be called to any, any, but you're not supposed to change your character and who you are in God in order to win others. There's, we've got to draw them into God's kingdom. We're not drawn into their kingdom. We, so we're supposed to have the power of eternity to be able to change lives. You know, I was telling her that when you get married, like me, I got married. And when you get married, you know, you have to even be careful in that place because if that person is not spiritual such as yourself um, and you are spiritually depth in God because you spent your whole life finding him, trying to find him, trying to go into him, then you, you might carry all the weight in a relationship. Now, this is not just for marriages. This is about any relationship. This is, we're not supposed to be unequally yoked together in any relationship, okay? Because if you carry all the weight, you know, then you can be unbalanced. It's like being on a seesaw, you know? The person that has the weight, when they sit on the seesaw, they're going to go all the way down to the ground because they're the heaviest in whatever, they, whatever they're called into. But the other person and if they have no weight in God, if they have no depth in God, then they're going to be lifted up to the top. So it seems that those that are lifted up to the top, they don't carry as much depth. But those that have weight, they are down to the ground because there is no balance. There is no balance. So we have to be equally yoked together, not just in marriage, but in relationships. Because, I mean, Satan is always trying to pull us into the natural because he knows that this is where he wins. He has no power in the spiritual planes because Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, has already defeated him. He's already cast him down. So he brings us down to the natural because this is where his battleground is and this is where he wins. So we have to constantly fight ourselves that we are not pulled into a place that we do not like. I hate my flesh because my flesh goes against God. It wars against what is right, what is right. So you got to hate what God hates even if it dwells on the inside of you. And so I told my granddaughter, we have to come in because the, the devil is using the laws like target practice. He's shooting young and old. They're dying like flies. And we got to get to them before their time run out, before our time run out. And we are restricted to um, four dimensions of space and that fourth dimension being time. We are restricted. Spiritually, there is no time. Spiritually, there is only eternity. But until we tap into that eternal spirit, we don't have that to lean upon. So we have to race against time. We're racing, Facebook family, against time. And I am fighting every day to stay in the place that God has brought me and to go further further into the depth of, of the Lord, that I will be able to go fishing for those that he have committed unto me. We have all been called to draw in those that have been committed unto us. Jesus said, I come, I pray not for the world, but for those that thou have given unto me. He said he didn't pray for the world, but he only prayed for those that God had given to him. So we have to find out what God has called us to do, what God has designed us to be, so we can manifest, because the Bible says that the earth grown of Travail, waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. And if we do not manifest, if we do not become fulfilled in the thing that we are designed to do and be, then we are lost as others. We are hopeless as others. It is time for us to get in our place. You know, when you are going after the truth, when you are sold out to God, there is going to be a battle like you have never known before. And the real battle is against ourselves. We are fighting to stay free from the arrows of the flesh. We are fighting to stay free from the nature of the flesh because Satan uses the flesh to fight us, okay? I don't care if it's your flesh or somebody else's flesh. He uses this domain to fight us. So we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against those things that are spiritual wickedness. The rulers, those that rule in the dark places, they're rulers over the darkness, those that dwell in darkness. We are wrestling not against flesh and blood, but we are wrestling against those that are ruling over those that remain in darkness against spiritual wickedness.
place in high places. Those that are exalted in the heavenly places, they are wicked. And we are wrestling not against these natural and carnal things. So we cannot be reduced to the carnal mind. You know, if you got to fight you, like I have to fight me, then the war is on. We got to get past ourselves so we can really... Do what we have been designed to do. I love your Facebook family with an everlasting love. I told my granddaughter that me and her, we're going to do a little um, set in together. Because, you know, sometimes you got to see it from the young people perspective. And I like that. I like that. Because these kids today, they are they are intelligent. They are smart. And sometimes we have to go inside of them and see how they truly view things. She said, Grandma, can I take that paper home with me? Of course you can. <laughs> Show your friends, okay? I love your Facebook family. Have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. And I'll see you one, um, one day this week. Um, Maybe me and my granddaughter come back up here and do another session together. Bye-bye.